Welcome to A Guy in His Pipe. I'm Travis Sivart. I'm going to sit back with the nice Savinelli full of Cornell and Deal Dark Cherry Cavendish. Got a really cool tamper here made by Martin Romge and a friend in the Netherlands. My Calibri lighter. You're going to hear me puffing and packing and tamping throughout this as we explore this weird, wonderful, wacky world, one destination at a time. We're gonna look at unique food experiences, maybe haunted locations, natural wonders, amazing historic sites, and even some of the weird stuff in this world like lost civilizations or crazy things that people say have happened. We're gonna do all kinds of things in this podcast. And speaking of historic sites and crazy things that happen in this world. Did you know there are places in this world where the sands sing? And we'll get to that in a moment. The singing sands. So today we're going to Qatar. Now that's an Arab country on a peninsula and it's mostly desert and along Persian Gulf or Arab Gulf shoreline of beaches and dunes. On the coast is Doha, the capital, and it's known for futuristic skyscrapers, ultra-modern architecture inspired by ancient Islamic design, and other things like the Limestone Museum of Islamic Art. The museum sits on a waterfront promenade. It sounds like a beautiful place, and Qatar has a desert climate, experienced long summers going from May to September, intense dry heat, Temperatures rising above 45 degrees Celsius, well over 100 for those of you that use Fahrenheit. Winter temperatures are mild and can fall below 5 degrees Celsius, so below 40. It has about 300 million people. And the capital city I mentioned, Doha, is called Al Dawa in Arabic. And Qatar National Day is December 18th, 1878. That's the day. They became a country, declared independence September 1st, 1971. Not too long ago, the year I was born. And it was recognized by the UK two days later on September 3rd. Now, Singing Sands. There are, if I'm not mistaken, about 30 places in the world with Singing Sands. So this is really interesting. It's a group of, in in Qatar, it's a group of crescent-shaped sand dunes about 40 miles, I'm sorry, 40 kilometers southwest of Doha. And they make a singing sound, sometimes by the wind or friction caused by walking, running, or sliding down the dunes. And depending where you are in the world, the singing sound can be different. Some are described as squeaking or whistling or booming. Some farting. They say it makes a farting noise, roaring. And some places they can be loud enough that it sounds like the rumble of thunder. But the ones in Qatar have a low frequency hum. They have tours. So a lot of companies, several companies, offer 4x4 desert safaris, which can have dune bashing, where the drivers go up and down giant dunes. They stop at Bedouin tents for dates and tea, which that sounds awesome. Full barbecue dinners at campsites, overnight camping, camel rides, shisha stops, and other stuff. Now the singing sand there is called whistling sand or barking sand, and it produces that sound. The wind blowing across it or stepping on the sand, sand can cause this. and it's nearly 450 hertz, it appears to be the frequency that's most commonly transmitted. Physicists are still arguing and figuring out how the sound is made. Theorized sand particles roll into each other and collide as they go down the dune. Every jolt produces a shock. All little shocks combined become audible. You can hear it. The shape of the dune, the, the dune face, functions as a loudspeaker. And depending on the size of the grains of sand, it can influence and change the sound, the singing, the melodies, the farting. 
So it's a coordinated movement of the grains of sand that creates the songs, which differ depending on the size of the sand. Fun fact, back in 1295, Marco Polo wrote of evil desert spirits, which at times fill the air with the sounds of all kinds of musical instruments, and also of drums and the clash of arms. You can find other references as far back as the Arabian Nights. Or as recently as the uh, science fiction film, Dune. Charles Darwin in 1889 mentions it in his classic Voyages of the Beagle. So, at least 31 desert and back beach booming dunes have been located in North and South America, Africa, Asia, and the Arabian Peninsula, and the Hawaiian Islands. So how cool would it be to take a vacation where you can grab a sled, the round plastic ones we use on snow hills, and slide down a hill and it sings or farts. I don't know about that one. As long as there's not a smell that goes with it, right? We could be okay then. So this is a shorter one. But that was too cool to pass up, and that's something I would definitely like to check out if ever I have a chance to make it out there. And I know people all over the world who listen to my podcasts, audiobooks, etc. So hopefully I can find a friend out that way, somebody to visit and take me to the best spots one day. If you know of a cool place, drop me an email at a guy in his pipe at gmail.com and check out travissivart.com. My last name is the same as my first, but reversed. And you could check out other incredible podcasts like Tavern Reflections, where I read classic stories or my own tales to help you relax and meditate. There's also The Traveler's Inn, which is an episodic fantasy sci fi. I have books and audiobooks like The Silver and Smith Chronicles, The Portals Fantasy Series. And maybe I'm going to need to include something like this in one of those books. So until next time, I'll raise my brandy snifter to you and say, remember, collect experiences because those last a lifetime.